All right, key points and observations. Two different fixtures here. Who can tell me what the fixture most likely is on the left, David McKenney? That's a mop sink faucet. That's awesome. It's a mop receptor down below there. And that is a faucet serving the mop receptor. On both pitches, Dave, what's going on? Oh, they have a uh, yeah host connection. So what's that thing? Vacuum breaker. What type of a vacuum breaker? Atmospheric. Very good. Atmospheric vacuum breaker. So here's some other key points and observations. Mop receptor, um, janitor sink or slop sink over here. Does anybody know what would be under there for a trap? Standard trap. Trap standard. Very good. So some of you are going to look at this and go, trap standard. What the hell does that mean? Have you never heard of a trap standard? Uh, you need to get familiar with a trap standard because there are several questions on your exam that will end up talking about a trap standard. It's a big trap, usually epoxied, sometimes cast iron that has a stand on it that you use a close nipple, usually a two inch or two and a half inch close nipple with a little stand it sits on the floor because it helps support this ginormous janitor sink, which is also cast iron. So as you're looking at these pictures and you're not seeing everything and because you have situational awareness because you've been in the field a certain amount of time, you're able to look at these pictures like you're going to be able to do on an exam and go, yep, seen that, know where it is, know what it's all about, seen that one, know, know where it is, know what it's all about, even though you're like looking at partial photographs. There could be at least a dozen questions out of any one of these pictures, talking about how that's supported on the mop receptor up here, that they would have been backing in the wall, the hanger that's going on the back of the janitor's thing, all that kind of stuff. If you've never done it, you've never taken any off, you haven't been observant, you haven't been in that part of the industry, that's not the plumbing board's problem. It's just because you decided not to go into a part of the industry that you would have kind of had some hands-on training with that. That's why most of us through our apprenticeships, you just kind of live in one place. You don't become that well-rounded, but you have to be aware that your test is going to assume that you've seen everything. And if you haven't, it's up to you to do more of the work to make sure you understand it by digging in. So key points and observations. One last key point, focusing on the placement of the atmospheric vacuum breaker. These are called control valves. Anything that turns water off and on prior to it being discharged is a control valve. Control valve almost makes you think, oh, the shutoff valve just above the water meter is the control valve. Well, it is a control valve. Some people might call it a primary control valve, but the placement of a control valve and your understanding backflow prevention and where backflow preventers can go and can't go, and they're very specific names like this one being an atmospheric vacuum breaker and that one being an atmospheric vacuum breaker, you can never have a shutoff of any type on the downstream end downstream of the control valve. In this case, hot water, cold water, hot water, cold water. There is no shutoff if somebody puts a hose on those connections. If you are going to have some type of shutoff on the outlet side or downstream of control valves, then a whole different set of backflow prevention devices comes into play.